losing her parents in horrific ways, to being a successful inspiration in many areas. Mitra believes that education is the key to success and a very strong weapon to defend yourself in a patriarchal society. Amongst her many achievements, Mitra founded the Youth Screen Movement organisation, where she organised conferences and workshops and provided special sessions for girls to motivate them to dream big and fight back against the patriarchal society to convert their dreams into reality. Mitra graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Politics, Philosophy and Economics and a minor in Development Studies. She worked with the World Bank and the United Nations Human Settlements Program and is currently with the New South Wales Government. I'd like to introduce Mitra Hussein. <laughs> inviting me. Um, it's great pleasure to be among you guys and speak and share a bit of my journey with you. Um, so in the last two years I have received uh, enormous support from PPW and Kofsaba and I am so honored to be introduced, that introduced again to your club. So it's uh, truly a pleasure to know you in Sydney as well. So, uh, yeah, a collective uh, effort of every one of you in this club really, you know, gives the, or holds the power to uplift so many lives, so thank you for doing that, and um, I actually want to share with you a bit of my journey, because it's a very long journey, um, a fight of 15, let's say 15 years with the patriarchal society that where, you know, education was not like for women. Um, so I want to start with why, when did I start and why did I continue and where am I today and where the future will be. When I was around nine to 10 years old, uh, the curiosity of why sexist chooses some people and not choosing some others, it started from my own house. Seeing uh, my father was not a very successful man. My mom, I remember, I am the youngest among my siblings, and I rem remember my mom was complaining about the bad choices my father made. So being curious to know about it, I asked my mother, why my father is poor and my uncle is rich? Is it because they separated and they got like, the property was not divided equally. So my mom said no. My grandparents sent both of them to school. My father chose not to go to his school and play with children. And my uncle did. So now he's a successful person. He's the mayor. But my father is not. So as the consequences of his bad, his bad decision, we suffered. The seven children suffered. So that's when I started loving going to school. The other second reason, which is a strong reason that kept me going stronger was uh, women considered a half person in that society. Let me tell you a story. There was a time a, a school teacher actually came to our house and knocked the door before coming in. He asked how many persons are inside. My mom replied, we are three. And when he came in, he saw my mother, my sister, and me. He said, one and a half person, not three people, because one woman equal to a half person, not a complete person. Wow. So I was young, but it stuck in my mind. I was like, I was expecting a disagreement from my mom and sister. This is Afghanistan, and, right? Yeah, and argument, you know, like, back to say, no, it's, it's not like that, but it was normal to them. They smiled and they let it go as if nothing bad had been said. So for me to, so I, sometimes I say curiosity is the mother of knowledge. I got curious to understand why these differences in this society. Why am I a half person? 
on that time my competition was me and my brother why he's a complete person and I am not so to find out I was really you know digging bits and pieces from school um, to understand is it religion is it culture is it society what is it then I read in the book that Islam says yeah both girls like women and men can get education. I was like, okay, it's not religion. This is culture. Slowly I found out that, okay, this is the patriarchal barriers that hold me back to achieve what I want, or it's not my capabilities. It's all about the gender discrimination. So that actually gave me the power to move forward and fight. Nine years was a very difficult year for me because that time you couldn't say anything but I, you have to just keep moving and achieving what you wanted to achieve when I understood that this is not my capability this is what because of the gender and male dominated society I decided to do something I thought if I don't do anything that means I am not going to change anything I'm not going to change something for me Look at the other girls. This, this situation will keep going and keep continue. So that's when the, you know, the burning desire for education and empowerment started in me. I made plan. Then I made plan A. Plan A was to get education, get a job, bring cash home because cash was the most important thing. Men were the wealthy because they bring in. They was they brought money home so that was my target i was like i can be independent i can be a strong woman when I, if i bring cash home then i said no matter what happens i'm not going to give up i'm going to surround myself with the people who do not discourage me but there was nobody there's nobody to surround myself that motivate me to move forward so i had no plan b you know why sometime Plan B hurts plan A. And I, I knew plan B was to get married in early age. So the other stories beside, I graduated from high school and then I, I was refugee on, on that time in, in Pakistan because of the Taliban. And then I went back to Afghanistan. I started working, I was just a high school graduate, but I was not, my target, my plan A was in my mind get education, even if it's high school, university, get a job, doesn't matter if it is not a high, like if you're not a university graduate. I got a job at International Medical Corps, which is an American organization, and uh, not very good salary. Then I brought cash home. Slowly and gradually start hearing nice news around me that oh, they started sending their daughters to school. Our relatives started motivating their daughters to go for high education. And that's sort of, sort of like I say indirect achievement for me. I didn't go and talk to them. I said, if I prove myself to the society, that means I can change so many other lives. Because once you start seeing somebody, oh, that person made it happen and it's possible, then they start believing their daughters. And then, I started working with World Bank. I had to choose between money and education because I graduated from an Afghan system, which was an old education system. And I thought, in order to develop in the future and get success, I need a quality education. So do I choose to work here and get the money? Or I have to go for higher education? I applied for a scholarship at the Asian University for Women. And I, full, I received a full scholarship, and that's an American university. And I studied it five years. During university, I used all the opportunities inside university, outside university, to participate to the conferences, workshops, training, so that just build my capacity, you know? Go back to the country and do something different. Um, and after graduation, I my one of the main the main dream job was to to get a job at United Nations. Right after graduation, when I went back, I got the job at United Nations. When I started working with United Nations, I thought, well, I have the capacity to do something. 
for the building the capacity of some other youth and young adults in this country. I know education system is not good, so I can do something. Volunteer my two days off. I created an organization by the name of Youth Green Movement, and I invited some other young adults to come and volunteer their time. We organize this, we organize conferences, workshops, and trainings, and um, and then I organized a conference how to lower the level of harassment um, in one province of Afghanistan. So I invited 50 male participants and 50 female because harassment happens, where the harassment come from? From men, right? So if we just collect women and talk about it, nothing is gonna change. So I said, no, I wanna have 50-50. So when they came in, they, they attended the workshop. After that, there were some, like, some of the male participants were very angry. They said to me that you are implementing Western ideas here. You may, you're turning women against us. So they gave my name to the Taliban because from that province to Kabul, there was a place called Jalrez. That was the place where the Taliban were living. Anybody? was crossing from that way, if their names were given to that Taliban, they right away were killing. Because a professor of university killed just one day before our conference. At the evening, I was at, um, invited by one of the parliament member to talk to him in the, or I think it was around seven or eight, I received a call. Somebody told me that your name is given to the Taliban list. Um, don't go by car. So the next day I took a flight and then when the Taliban in August 2021 took over the country, after that also, like it was in the end of uh, 2018, I didn't stop my, my activities. I kept going. I was like, I'm not scared because my target is to bring the change, to do something. Why would this group stop me? But when they took over the country, I had two choices, to stay and die every single moment of my life or escape and die once. Because chaos at the airport was like, it was very dangerous. There was a time, I was four days in the airport. There was a time I had no hope of staying alive. So much firing, killing from every Taliban in the United States. And um, so finally, Actually, I had the opportunity to go to the United States and I said I'm not going to the United States because I can see they are destroying my country. I see they are funding the Taliban and I'm not going there. I want to go to New Zealand or Australia, fast Australia. So Australia is the most peaceful country and they always contributed to the peace in the world. So I came here and now I am starting again from scratch. You know, I build it and build it bits and pieces. Now I am, I have to start again from the scratch. Um, I have been stateless in my entire life. Being in Pakistan, they were like, okay, you're from Afghanistan. Being in Afghanistan, the major, I am the minority. So the majority is Pashtun. They call me and no, you don't belong to this country. And it's just like, you know, I have been stateless my whole life. I was like, where I belong to? Now I belong to Australia. This is my final destination, and this is my and this will be my country, and I see a great future ahead. Thank you. Thank you.